with the 10th video in our VBOTS ROS2 tutorial series. So before this, we have learned lot of debugging tools and lot of concepts in ROS2 and VBOTS. Now it's time to implement some projects so that at the end of this series, you can independently develop some cool projects. So when you will implement this project, you will learn about SLAM, which is simultaneous localization and mapping. Also, we will see that in real world, we do not have exact odometry. That means we have noise in our odometry. So in, in this case, we will have noisy odometry and we will be using SLAM toolbox to get a perfect map. So if some of these things are higher level to you, it's okay. We will go step by step. And by the end of this project, you will be able to implement SLAM independently. So without wasting much of our time, let's see how the output of our project will look. So here we on our VBOTS node. On the other hand, we have our SLAM node working. And if I show you in Arvis, you see here there is issue in odometry, but our SLAM toolbox is correcting the pose so that we can map the environment correctly. So you see here, it is mapping the environment and the white one which you see is the laser scan. So once this mapping is done, let me take it here. Yeah, so once we are done with mapping, we see an map which has three obstacles. So now let's see what was the exact. So this was our world where we had robot with a LiDAR on it. And with this, we had line following scheme, which we implemented in our sixth video and we had three obstacles. So you see there were two squares and one irregular shape. This is exactly what we saw in our map. So at the end of this, you can save this map. You can load this whenever you want to use. So without wasting much of our time, Let's go through basics of SLAM toolbox and how to integrate LiDAR in this video. And in next video, we'll be learning about the implementation of the code and we will build the project and run it. So in this section, let's answer the question, what is SLAM? So SLAM is simultaneous localization and mapping. This method is used by autonomous systems to build a map and localize simultaneously. So this is a chicken egg problem because to estimate pose, we need a map and to build a map, we need to estimate our pose. There are different ways by which we can do SLAM. It depends on what sensors we are using. So either we can use LiDAR and odometry for SLAM, which is known as LiDAR SLAM. It can be done in 2D and 3D. We can also use camera, which is known as visual SLAM. Continuous frames of camera is used in order to estimate the pose and create a map. So now let's look at applications of SLAM. So SLAM has applications indoor, underwater, outdoor or in space. An example being navigating fleet of mobile robots to arrange shells in warehouse. Also, if you want to park a self-driven car in an empty spot, you need SLAM. So let's discuss this example where if there is a car and it knows just the spot where it needs to park, 
it needs to build a map around itself in order to look for obstacles and then slowly navigate towards the empty spot and park the car. Similarly, we have such applications in delivery packages by drone in an unknown environment. This will include 3D SLAM. Also, navigation, robot mapping and odometry for virtual reality or augmented reality. So after knowing what is SLAM, let's discuss about an implementation which is SLAM Toolbox. So luckily, if you feel the topic which we discussed was intimidating, we should thank Steve Makinski for making SLAM Toolbox available for everyone. So this toolbox can be used for different application of your SLAM. So this is the GitHub repo. You, the link will be given to you. So if you want to know much more details, you can look at this video, which is from Roscon Macau. And description of the toolbox is given where all the details about how can we make the map, how can we save it, and what are the parameters is given. So you see this wonderful map being built by a robot with just LiDAR sensor and odometry. And this uses lifelong mapping structure where it is used in an environment where it is dynamic. So something or the other is changing. So these robots map the environment 24 by 7 till their life. So if you see there are different optimizers. So if you are expert in SLAM, you must be knowing that there are different solvers and optimizers in order to get your map correct. Most of the plugins are available in this repository. And we also have Arvis plugin with this in order to make our life easy. But we don't have this GUI in ROS2. This is just for ROS1. And metric, that means accuracy of the SLAM is shown here. And also we will see today that in spite of having bad odometry, we are able to get great results in terms of map. And also there are APIs. So these are services which can be used for different applications like clearing the map or saving the map, etc. And from here, you see different types of solvers, different preconditions and cross cross loss functions. So these things can be set in a config file. So in next video, we will look at how can we change the parameters in SLAM toolbox to suit our application. These are also the parameters which we need to feed in to this toolbox in order to get good results. So it includes what is our odom frame, map frame, base frame, scan topic, etc. You can have a look at all the parameters which are available to be set and their definitions. And now we will see the installation. So we can install SLAM toolbox with the following command. So let's quickly install it. But here we will use Foxy in place. So let me copy this and I think we will need to add sudo sudo apt install ROS. We need Foxy here. And when I hit on enter, so it is building the package for me. So it shows that it was upgraded in my case. And I am seeing the results. It will take a bit of time for you guys and you will have this package working. So after this package is built, you can run ROS2 launch SLAM toolbox 
online synchronous launch and there is one more online asynchronous launch so today we will be looking at online asynchronous launch so this is all about the toolbox and we have one more gif a cool gif in terms of map so in this section we will study and understand how our project is implemented so first of all we have a node which enables our lidar and publishes the scan in our ros2 framework after which in the same node we update our odometry according to the motion of wheels and publish the updated odometry to our ros when we give these two inputs to our slam toolbox it looks at the scan and if the scan is matching our map it updates the map and if the scan is not matching the map it will update our odom link with respect to map and again try to match our scan with the map so if this feels alien to you we will see its practical implementation and you will understand it better so after doing this bunch of time where we updated our odom link and we updated our map we do line following and our robot moves and reach at the end of the line and then at the end when you see in harvis 2 you will see complete map at the end we will learn how to save the map so this is the flow chart of our project so in this section we will look at how we added lidar in our robot so this is our proto custom proto so we can right click and convert to base node so we are doing reverse engineering actually you will have a robot node and then you will convert it to proto so in robot node we will have a child named lidar sensor not basically you will not see this so you go in plus sign you go in base nodes and here you will get lidar here you go so if you click on lidar you will get this node and when you open that node you will have bunch of variables you will need to name your lidar sensor here and this is the name which will be used in your controller that is in our ros2 after which in our case we had to flip our scan by 180 degrees because in slam toolbox my right wall was showing it in left so we had to shift this on which i made a solid so this is just for illusion purpose but the main thing is you need to flip your lidar by 180 degrees and you need to translate it by 0.05 if you don't translate it it will be on your base link and it will even show the scan of the robot so these are the two parameters which were set here and then in child it's very easy you go in child you go in children you select add a shape so in base node you will see a shape which is here when you click on add i already have it so it will come here then we can add appearance and geometry so in our case we have height and radius to show this but you should note here that even if you don't have this solid still your lidar node will work fine this is just for illusion so that a non vbots person can know that there is a lidar here and to debug he will know that if this is seeing an object or not so to check if your lidar is correct you need to go in view you need to go optional render and here 
you have lidar ray and point cloud so we'll click on lidar ray so we see here that our, our lidar is seeing 360 degrees that is because we set the value of our lidar which is this field of view is 360 degrees we have horizontal resolution 1441 that means it is roughly equal to 4 pi so and our range is from 0.12 to 0.2 if you change the range here you see your outer circle is becoming smaller or larger and you can also change the minimum range like if i do 0.3 your under circle will change so this means that lidar will just publish messages between these two circles so if there is a case where i i am seeing this obstacle so in this case this obstacle will not be published as we have our inner circle bigger than the obstacle so these are some parameters which you need to consider while setting up your lidar configuration after you change this you can save this file and in your slam toolbox.wbt you will be able to see the robot node and that node can be copied to a proto if you didn't understand the last part you can watch our video of how to make a proto the link of the video will be given in the description so i think we have covered lot of concepts in this video so in next video we will learn and do some coding where we will see how lidar was enabled in our vbots node in order to publish it in ros2 we will enable line following logic we will study about slam configurations and how we can change it we will also study about how we set up our ros package in order to facilitate our slam project in ros2 and finally we will build and run the project which will also include saving the map so after studying basics of slam i would like you guys to do a bit research and comment which is the best slam method and why so you will get multiple answers but i would like to know how did you come up with the decision of the best method so do comment and let's enlighten our community